Welcome to Spirit Baby Radio. I am your host, Kelly Meehan, a citizen of the universe and a passage keeper and mentor for our new earth children. I believe we are entering into a new psychic structure of our reality, and it is meant to embody deeper trust and ways into solid self-love and fearless integrity. Our new world energy of spirit babies needs us to consciously create within conception, trust pregnancy, and have freedom to birth and parent from innate wisdom. This is Spirit Baby Radio. Welcome to episode 187, Everything is Frequencies, expanding into your own divine blueprint to invite the energy of spirit babies. What does it mean that everything is frequencies? Are you ready to expand into your own blueprint? How are you supporting your energy with spirit babies in conception and pregnancy and into birthing and life? I have a special guest here, Anastasia. Anastasia? Anastasia. Am I saying it wrong? <laughs> no, you both are good. Okay. <laughs> um, Anastasia Townshead, Townsend, I'm sorry, <laughs> has been sharing the abilities acquired over 30 years as a licensed massage therapist, biodynamic craniosacral therapist on land and in water, midwife, sacred birthing mentor, educator, and healing facilitator. I'm so excited. There's so much running through my mind on our conversations and our connections. Welcome, welcome. Say hello to everybody. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> and so I feel like we go way back. Um, I don't even know, probably in the birthing energy vibes and community. And maybe we've been secretly spying on each other for years. <laughs> I know that's true for from my side. <laughs> well, I was always really, um, maybe you don't know this, even like years ago on Facebook before the whole pandemic shift reality, I think you're more accepted now, to be honest, <laughs> you really are. But before then it was like, oh, she's a little bit controversial or what is she saying and about that quantum and about timelines and multi-dimension reality people have softened because literally their consciousness has changed and i remember some of your posts and i was like oh wow i'm like she's talking about things that people just don't get i can mm -hmm. tell i was like people are trying to left brain it is what i say they're trying to overthink it and it's more than just that and so that's my introduction to our meeting and of course you know you've been connected with mentorship and the spirit baby academy and it's been really awesome but I want to hear, there's so many things I want to hear, like all this amazing work that you do. And it's all um, within the parenting and baby yeah, realms, right? Yeah. Yeah. Supporting families. Yeah. Tell, tell, tell me, let's go back in time and tell me more about midwifery, sacred mentoring. What does all that mean? And, and what, how did you get into that? Mm, yeah. And sacred birthing, mentoring, sacred birthing, um, just to make that clear is from the book Sacred Birthing, so with uh, Birthing in New Humanity with Sunny Carl. And um I'm and she it goes way back with her before Sacred Birthing was, you know, out in the world, birthed into the world, so to speak. But um let's see. I guess in some ways it, you know, it started with my own births. And I was really young when I started having babies, really. And it and for me it just felt quite natural. And um, <laughs> then it moved into the energy realm. And I realized how much working with energy was like birth. It was really sort of the same to me, the way I would feel energy in my body and move energy and, you know, birth babies. It just went together. So somewhere in there, I, I ended up, uh, well, I was in massage school, actually. And about the end of massage school, I ended up uh, finding my my teacher, and uh, she was she's quite interesting, <laughs> still is, <laughs> um, and she, yeah, the introduction to her was really interesting, and it was re really a heart opening experience for me. It's the first time I had felt this um, that kind of energy go through my body in a way and just connecting. And it was really at a, a whole life expo, believe it or not, <laughs> back in the day. I don't know if that still is, exists, but um, at the time she was in that circuit and she, I, I went to her, her 
talk and uh, met quite a few people that I, I'm still connected to to this day. And I didn't see myself doing that, but somehow through circumstance, I ended up in her classes. And really for the last 30 years, I've studied energy medicine, really. But it's taken all kinds of different forms. Eventually I went to midwifery school. I was, when I did that, I was really careful because I wanted the imprint to be really specific. And I found um, quantum midwifery with um, Wapio in the, it's the mm, Matrona. And that's, that's quite interesting work. And there's, there's others out there that teach in that similar way, but at the time that's who I found. And then, and somewhere before that, just before I'd found Sunny and um, I had been, I had been teaching childbirth and I had been doing a little bit of doula work. My kids were small and I, I have six kids total that I birthed. So a lot of babies with, ex so a lot of experience with that. And then, um, with Sunny, it was just it was just an ongoing thing. She had um, got the book written and into the world, and then I I went through all of you know whatever she was teaching. We spent a lot of time in Hawaii, and I went through all her classes and whatever mentorship, and um, we're we're still connected as well. And I I kind of I sat on the what she called the sacred birthing guiding circle and. Yeah, well, you'll find me in her book in little spots <laughs> where I've. Um, That's cool. Could, would yeah. she come on this podcast? <laughs> yeah, she, she would. I, I yeah, I, I actually thought about that today. She should totally be on your podcast. You can hook us up. <laughs> yeah, I will. That would be amazing. I will. It would be really fun. Yeah, she she's super interesting, and and it's 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 so fun to just talk birth with her. So mm. that would be that'd be great. Um, yeah, so that's sort of my story around just being in this work. And I, I went into cranial sacral because the, that work, because as I, as babies were being born, I mean, that work is so perfect, just as they're right there, they're, they're right out of the womb and they're they need those adjustments mm. and it's and I I was very attracted to the biodynamic cranial sacral because it's so it's really energetic it's it's so gentle and with babies you don't even necessarily even have to actually put your hands on them they're so sensitive so um I I most of my approach in whatever I've been attracted to is always very gentle and I would say it all stems from the original question that I had, which was um, my my deepest interest was how does soul meet body? How how does spirit you know work through the physical? How do how where's the place in the body that that you know <laughs> connects and we're you know spiritualizing matter in a, in a sense. So yeah that was my that's so what, what is what is the answer to that <laughs> <laughs> i'm still working on it but i i found so much more in terms of just literally the physics of how we come into being that's probably why when you've heard me go off on these tangents <laughs> <laughs> you'll speak and then something will trigger those thoughts for me and and, the, and it's those little pieces of information I'm not always really good at taking a whole, uh, you know, bit of information and being able to relay it. It's sometimes it's when I'm speaking with people and then something gets triggered and all of a sudden it's just, it all kind of flows out. I, I'm, yeah, I'm a big picture person, but I don't always have the ability to explain the whole big picture. I guess that's the best way to put it. So yeah, the the spirit meets body it's really been interesting. And I usually when I get into those kind of topics with people, I lose them because it's, it can get too technical and the physics are super interesting to me, but not always to everybody else. Mm. So, but I've really found it's, it has to do with the DNA, <laughs> you know, our DNA and even 
whether we're interested in that information or not, you know, is, is about our DNA. <laughs> Maybe you can give us, I love this because I feel like, yeah, like, you know, the wheels are turning and some people may feel like they're super left brain, right? A lot of people do that. I got to like left, I call it left brain it like over and over, like I got to figure it out. But I love when this new information, maybe to our own like minds, like it's like really letting it sit in, in the body. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, let, we can even start, I'm curious, I want to hear, I'm sure my, <laughs> my community would be curious too, is just that connection, like for you and what you've seen and learned is we'll start even the before life, this embryonic you know, you talk about DNA and like this information and, you know, in many of years, people always ask, and we've had that conversation. I remember like, when is the baby here? Like, when is their consciousness? And people think, I think there's a, a something going around like, well, the baby's just, there's nothing until it's born. <laughs> like, right. And it's yeah. like a belief system we've created, but I yeah. feel like you were explaining one time about the embryonic energetic. Do you remember that or no? I was like, I want to hear, I want um, the energy of the audience to feel, because I'm a feeler. So even if you say yeah. things and my mind may be wandering, it's like, I'm feeling the energetic structure of yeah. your information. And so, yeah. And so, you know, yeah, bring it to us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's when, that's when I get in trouble because I don't remember all the details, but um, yeah, what it makes me curious about like what you felt when I first shared that information with you. Like it felt like, I just want to say it felt like um, you were going into some deep wormhole <laughs> timeline yeah. and yeah. it was like, and the possibility and the, and the openness of it. It's like, it's good to know that there are other levels of thought process and possibility and energy, right? It's kind of like, we think about like Einstein, right? Everything's a theory, but, and then Bruce Lipton epigenetics, everything's a theory and they say a theory, but there's so much truth to it. Right. It's like very, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I I have that same experience where I'm like, no, but this is this is real. <laughs> so, but yeah, so the the yeah, there I it is really controversial when does the baby actually enter the body? And I I don't know if I can remember exact days, you know, that that I can tell you that again. I know it's I sent it written to you, but um it's much later than we would think organically, right? But what I I think what I was talking about at the time was that something else goes on, something else happens that it becomes much sooner than it would be organically. And the, there's a reason for that. And that's when we would get into some really mm, areas that might be hard for people to follow me. So I... Um, in this case, I guess what we were talking about was um, the six day fetal cell integration. I think, does that ring a bell? Yeah. Yeah. Where um, there's a, and I'll, I'll just go out on in, in the weeds. This word, what is how I describe it usually is I'm going to go in the weeds for a little bit. Hmm. You follow me or not, but um, it's, it's when, uh, we have the idea is that we have uh there's a mutation that's within the planetary grids and um we're uh, structurally energetically the same as the planet you know because we're we're both in uh come through creation that way so we're built the same and i know that may might not make a lot of sense but there's like the it's i've heard it referred to as like the bones of god you know how creation is set up and when when there's a mutation that's in the planet that's going to be in us too so um the the mutation comes through the sperm and and then it in and it enters uh when it enters the egg it, it it takes us essentially on a different trajectory than we would be organically and then it tethers the the soul to the body sooner and that means like if something uh is not right you know where nature would just kind of um the the body would reject the the pregnancy or maybe even the incoming soul would be like oh no not yet and you know it would the body would just go um 
there it it complicates things for the the soul to kind of have to deal with more than it would if it wasn't attached that soon it gives us a little room um and that's all fine but uh coming in that that little mutation and the trajectory that it takes us on is is a lot to kind of get into and I, and I think I've <laughs> you I think you kind of know where that conversation goes like I can talk about my experience with what I energetically have seen with it it would be amazing want. yeah so um there is a a technique to intervene on that mutation what it sets up in us and this is where it might trigger a lot of people because it I'll, I'll get to that. Um, this little point ends up developing on the tailbone from that mutation. And um, in that little point on the tailbone, it, when I went into it energetically, what I saw, cause I did this work, let's just say I did this work on my husband cause he's a great guinea pig for me. So <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can use him to, you know, test these things. So, and what I'm talking about isn't, uh, it's information that can be found and I'm certainly willing to share it all. I, and it's not my information specifically, it's just information that I had that I worked with. And so when I went in to look at it, cause I wanted to remove it, um, it, it, his, his experience was, um, surprisingly accurate when I didn't really tell him what I was going to do, um, he knew generally what I was going to do, but it was, it was interesting. So I went in and I actually went in a little too far. Hmm. I went in to the, the little red dot on the tailbone and I, it makes me so nervous telling this story. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. So I went in and what I saw is it was essentially a little dimension of hell. And, and that's what kind of the, the mutation sets up for us. And that's why it's on the sixth day, if you can imagine, like mm. the six, six, six. Yeah. So it sets that up. And then, and I found in there that it's also connected to, and here we're going to go stretch a little bit uh, into these, um, because everything exists simultaneously, all ourselves are, you know, the past and the present, the future are all simultaneous. And so um, when I went into that, um, well, I'll explain first that I, I saw the, this like fiery kind of like, if you've, there's movies I could use to describe it. I literally have one reference, which is if anyone's ever seen Keanu Reeves and uh, Constantine. Oh yeah. That's intense. That's yes. Intense. I mean, they consider that a horror movie, but, um, and it is, it seems like a real movie. <laughs> so graphic. Yeah, exactly. He's fighting Archangel Michael in that movie. Mm. So um, he, he has this reason. I can't even remember now to go into hell and he mm. uses that hair and water with his feet and he ends up in this really super fiery place well I was shocked that at first I was realized oh I'm in here mm -hmm. and I was looking at something very similar to what that scene showed and I was like whoa and when I was there I <laughs> I actually got that it was um there's like all these sort of invitations to experience some level of you know interference in our life like some for some it's very hell ish and for others not as much right it's and i don't know what determines that mm. for somebody but we can kind of see it in our world where you know you drive into the city and you're going to see people who are literally operating like they're in some other reality and they are and it looks sort of hellish and I, it's it's upsetting but that's what i mean so i backed out <laughs> um seeing that and then uh then it was of course to deal with it and so that's a whole technique description so it, it's easier to say just that I removed it mm. and when I removed it because you have 
to be operating sort of at a certain frequency just to do mm. this technique. And from that place, I could see that it, I, in the way I described it, so my husband was with sound because I you always work with sound. That's my main modality, even though I'm super shy about it and <laughs> typically go into the world with that. But um, so I use sound, but I could see the reverberation mm. from his body out to all these other timelines. And it was like a reset in a sense, because it informed them because they, in, they affect us and we affect them. It's all us, but in different time, space, you know, reality. <clears throat> so, and then it reverberated back and it was, and then, so it's just this reset. So from that, I, I, I got the name of, this is the unburdening. Hmm the unburdening because and you could you could do a whole thing on that because in that we are connected to um our karmic lineage you know there's a there's a karma that uh, kind of comes with um just being born into a body through our families then that connects us to it and we don't have to be we we do not have to to process or do we carry so much in our bodies mm. that's not ours to carry and it's how do we know yeah, yeah and i think it's really becoming there's so much more awareness around that we are energy and information and in relationship with all of that and if we we really understood that about ourselves so if that's what we learned in school it would be such a different experience for mm. us but that's not what we learn we we're completely denied that aspect to ourselves so i mean and i could i could go into that but um <laughs> in in this case you know, i spent in the last 30 years under learning about energy and so my world is a little different in the way i see things and the way i understand and process things so this is a this is natural to me at this point to be able to I was taught how to do all of this. And so with that also, I can, you know, I can get pretty creative. <laughs> I, I, well, sure. something you said, <clears throat> I love that because you've been like really in practice with the energetics for 30 years and on, on earth, that's a long time. <laughs> so yeah. your level of thought and your process, your perception is, and this is why we get along so well, <laughs> yeah. because I like, yeah. I understand that because I know I've brought in, brought in, I've brought in, we can different, make a yeah. It's yeah. Allowed. We do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've brought like different insights and curiosities to you. And, and I'm like, for some reason, I was like, wow, she kind of understands my language. Like, I do. and nobody does. Uh, I'm, I know that nobody does. And even when I'm one-on-one -on -one in sessions, some people, I, they're very intuitive, beautiful, open, and loving, but some people I'm like, oh, I really want to go to this timeline wormhole conversation. Right. Because that's, what's coming through. But I also know they're not going to know what I'm saying. And mm -hmm. sometimes in a session, I feel like it's important to say something. I'll say, your left brain is not going to know what I'm saying right now, but I want you to hear it and just absorb it. Just let go, <clears throat> whatever that part of you is. But even when you were talking about, so coming back to, you know, the clearing of that energy, when you were talking about that, what really came into my perception is almost like it reminds me of like um, a comet coming through into the atmosphere and it collects debris and stuff. And I'm like, is there now, you have me curious. It's like, is there this in-between energy of like how we're, we're integrating into a physical body, but are we picking up shit along the way <laughs> oh, at no. the entrance? And then, and then he has like, you know, maybe this is why people think that babies are born with sin. You know, it's like what all this energy they've taken on. I mean, that's the idea. And, you know, I'm no like religious person that knows enough about that, but I've heard that. And yeah. so it's kind of like what's collected and you talk about the spine, right? It's like that little, I know in pre uh, perinatal psychology, that's our first growth into this world, right? It's like literally the spine. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then, and so you're saying, so there's these hell realms or whatever it was like is showing up in his body. Am I saying that right? Comes kind of. Well, it's a, well the way I saw it is it's kind of yeah. like the TARDIS. 
if you've watched Doctor Who, another reference is the the TARDIS is is the time machine, right? It's oh, okay, yeah. Small, small on the outside and big on the inside, so it's this one little dot, and it is literally just one uh, yeah. dimensional place. Yeah, and we don't have to. That's not ours. We didn't come in with that. That's not a yeah. human. That's not divine design, as I would say. I well, that yeah, the like that, that's why I use those words in the title, the divine blueprint. I love that. <laughs> I took your your energetic yeah. words, mixed it in there, and so so. Then what happens now with your husband as the guinea pig? What 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 what, what changes in him after this experience? Anything different emotionally, spiritually, physically? This is really cool. Um, it's so much better to have him describe it in his words. But you can hear it, so I'll do my best. I, I did um, sit down with him a couple days after the experience and videotape a conversation with oh, him. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the reason I couldn't totally share it was because of the actual technique. I really exposed exactly how to do it, which I don't, I still don't know that most people would even know how to do what I did. To me, that's, it was easy, but yeah anyway it's it's kind of like uh the person who did came up with the technique wasn't too happy with me about that part but I didn't I my intention was never to share the video out it was like taking video notes so yeah, I can remember you it. could do that yeah <laughs> and, and it was a line she, there's bits and pieces actually that we could even connect to and somebody could if they're curious enough could go watch what he has to say but the way he described it was um he he talked about several things but one of them was um uh he he's the one that kind of came up with that the trajectory was changed like mm. it was meant to go this way but then it's pulled off this way he had a really good description for all that he also talked about the it comes i don't know i swear he mentioned something about this this um picture that is well known it's been around for a long time it came from another country i think but it's where you see uh, a, the globe and there's half the world um is in light and half is in dark and there's uh i am not going to be able to explain it well but he um talked about how did he put that oh gosh i should if i'd known we would even go here i would have watched it and kind of reminded myself so maybe we'll have to make a connection i'll have to send that video to you so you can you can then everybody's gonna be like but kelly like what, 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 what? <laughs> yeah i told you we're casual conversation here we don't know where it's going <laughs> and i told you my memory is not always that's why i have a hard time well with. it's okay i mean it sounds like he had a healing experience from this and would you say this is something that was an embryonic level for him is that where he worked yeah yeah, he um I, I would say he definitely he described because I did not tell him the details. That's what blew me yeah. away. Yeah. Okay. He thought perfectly what this was. Wow. I did not tell him. Yes. And so um that's why his description is so important. And unfortunately I'm not being able to Yeah, and if you it. don't if you can't speak it the way you want, it's fine. We're gonna yeah, leave okay. people. We're gonna leave people in mystery. Oh my gosh! Well, I'll, <laughs> you, know, you guys connect a link to there's the video. Some of the video is on YouTube in pieces because um, the person who did come up with the technique, who taught me, um, and I did my own version of the technique. I yeah, you're your own sovereign soul. You do. I feel like when we learn like Reiki or something, mm -hmm. it's really not about the practice of Reiki. It's literally the person is what I feel. Sure, that's you know? true. And Reiki, in my my from my perspective as an energy person, is that it's really overused. And the reason is because people are trying to describe energy work. To yeah, other. exactly. Reiki is so well known that that's why I give that as an example. Yes, exactly. So they they do understand it. Yeah, but but people take and do what they want with things. So what I think what I'm coming down to, it's like. Mm -hmm. um but i know what you're saying energetically it's hard to put articulate words <laughs> it is to this story it's like here feel my experience Let, let's download it <laughs> he's so good at describing it though and and really so we're we're so different in in that regard he is mm. very articulate uh, let's just say that i'm not quite as articulate as he is have so, you done this work not to cut you up have you done this work with like mothers and like healing oh. maybe healing their own 
mother, their wounds from their own childhood or babyhood, or, or maybe there's a, maybe there's something that's coming to you. Yeah. I want to hear. That's such a good question because yes, um, I, before I knew this technique, I knew of the existence of it. Right. And it, not a lot at the time. And I was working with a mom. She came to me for some cranial sacral work with, and she was pregnant and she was due, you know, not long after. And I was just sitting in the energy with her. And all of a sudden the baby is like, Hey, can you do this for me? She was asking me to remove that cell from her tailbone. And I was like, I was just blown away. Uh, First thing was like, who are you? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're talking to me about something that I wasn't even, it was like the farthest thing from my mind at that moment. And then I'm, here's this baby like, Hey, can you just do this for me right now? Well, it's, you know, I'm still pretty much completely energy. <laughs> and not, you know, I haven't quite made the transition into the world yet. Yes. And I was like, yes. And so later I found out that generally speaking, the technique isn't done on um, children or babies. It's usually someone older. Mm. I don't exactly know the reason for that because that wasn't my experience. I was just taught that, but I, um, that was even later after this experience, but I was like, Hey, you know, a baby asked me for this and I did it. And, and I told the mom, I was like, I don't know who this kid is, but <laughs> look out. This one's, this one's going to be, you know, it's one of the new ones that that is what I like to say. One of the new ones that they're coming in with some stuff cleared out of the way. They don't have, they're not coming in with as much to sort of mm. get through, like say, you know, I was, or some people that I know, you know, older than me that, yeah, even more. Got but, a lot to sort through. <laughs> to sort through. And, and yeah. you, did, you mentioned it, that we do have a lot of interference here. If a thing that drives me crazy, and I'll, I'll just bring up movies, really mm. like to, to program us with the, um, with the idea that humans are the ones who are at fault for mm. everything. And they like to, it, it, you'll catch it. It's so subtle, but it's, it's, it's a running theme through a lot, most movies that I see. And the truth is there's something else going on here. And yes, we are responsible. We, yes, we do have messes to clean up and, and yes, we're actually supposed to be the guardians of this planet. Mm. Uh, but we've been interfered with mm. from the, the get go, like, coming in and there is so much going on in this field i i should mention that dot on the tailbone this is the controversial part Mm -hmm. if if nothing else i said already (laughs) 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 let me add this to it the tailbone that little spot on the tailbone i saw what it creates in our field Mm -hmm. not just that little spot but the tube torus it, cre- it it generates the tube torus. What is the tube torus? It's um, a, a closed energy system. Um, it is a not organic to us. So when the whole new age thing is running around saying the tube torus is great geometry, the planets got it, all the planets have it, all our bodies have it, it's something that's natural to us. No, no, it's not. That's and you're like, it. let's break it and get rid of it. Oh, like, yeah. I want to tear that net down. Wow. So, yeah. So some of what I feel like my maybe soul contract here is, yeah. is to help people clear these things mm. as they're bringing in, you know, babies that they're coming. Can you imagine kids are coming in? They don't have all this stuff to that I, I could get into, you know, the yeah. seven overlay we're all taught in the new age stuff that the seven chakras is what we're working with. That's actually an overlay. We're, we're actually 15. And once we move, integrate, because there are people out there teaching to remove it. Mm. And you sure could choose to do that, but I don't recommend it because all that's information and we just need to integrate it. Mm. And once we do that, we're working with a completely our organic chakra system it's different it looks different energetically if you had clairvoyance you would see it different Mm. and 
same thing. The tube torus does not belong there. So yes, it is something I like to remove. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're just teaching me something. Cause I've, I've never heard of those terms. I don't, but I know what you mean. I feel like in the new age, like people would come to me for a session throughout the years and be like, will you clear my chakras? Will you clear my blocks? And I'm like, it's so much more than that for me. I'm like, but I understand why people have created more of a fluff language, we could say, because sure. the stuff that you're going into, it's really freaking deep, but it's also very activating, right? Mm -hmm. It's yeah, because it's, it's almost like you see something, you know, something and you're, you're embodying it, but you're like bringing it forward to, to kind of reflect to other people and people don't want to be reflected to. <laughs> I can see mean. it being super intense. And yet I love how this baby was like, you're like backing away going, okay, baby, baby's like, we got to do this. You're like, okay, let's do this. And and I love that because I've seen with spirit babies throughout the years that they are the healer sometimes to the parents, whether the parent realizes it or not. Yeah. I mean, this brings me to Ray Castellino because you were, you were talking about, you know, um, how we, you didn't say it in these words, but how we embody this information. I, I was thinking about this earlier today where Ray embodied, he, he illuminated really what it was to be a baby. Mm. He, he embodied that. And like, in a way I've never seen, and I, you've met him, right? I Can you give me, give an introduction to who Ray is again? Do you know his? Yeah. Yeah. Ray, Ray's a, he, well, he was a, a chiropractor, so he was a doctor, but his, his study was, um, imprints and the things he taught were like sequencing so there was the seven principles i think it's seven principles um of uh, i don't remember what he called them. i think he just called them the seven principles or something like if you look ray up ray castle and seven, yeah you're gonna find what that is and he had a whole clinic in santa yeah, barbara california yeah and i know because my school when i went 18 years ago they um had inter mixing classes and I don't think I've ever physically I may have met him in passing but I never experienced anything with him oh okay and I, honestly do you know why why I was so intimidated by his energy and the work he was doing because I didn't know at the time so this was like when I started you know my early 30s I had a lot of birth fear and trauma okay so I was literally in avoidance with him I was like it just scared the hell out of me but then I didn't realize <laughs> After the journey, I was like, I had so much foundational trauma. It was literally suppressed in me. And then, you know, it was acting out in ways, obviously through body discomfort and chronic pain. But then I know, and I feel like, oh, like I never got to like sit one-on-one -on -one experience his energy. Um, but I did, I did attend his memorial, his virtual memorial. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's when, that's I knew him, I guess. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Just go watch videos of Ray. So yeah. Ray, but to be in his presence was to understand an infant in, in, in a, in a, he slowed down time mm. His he was so present mm -hmm. and it was, it, it, you could feel it, you know, from him. It, I did very a couple, much so. Yeah, I did. A, I was, it was really special because I got to do a couple uh, workshops with him. Not, not the womb surround which I think would have been amazing, but um, I did the Im impulse into being with him. Mm -hmm. And the, the cool part was that we did it in water too. Mm -hmm. so it was wow. Yeah. yeah. So the water experience with when you're healing your own birth stuff is phenomenal. It, it to me, there's no better place really to experience healing those places in yourself really deep is, is, in warm water so yeah he he um he just illuminated that he he could describe and not it's, it wasn't just his descriptions his teaching was just you know was in you could is the word imbibe is mm, that from I don't know. His, his presence it would you would get it and especially if you're like, like a, an energetic kinesthetic. I know when I did see him before, probably a few years before he passed, he did do this, um, this group and he was looking at the people and he's like taking everybody in out quietly. And 
He's like, wait, and you can feel him melting into the space. Yeah, he was highly empathic. I would even say kinesthetically, energetically, very much aware of that. And so I could see why the baby energies would gravitate towards mm -hmm. that authentic openness, male, even male energy, father energy, right? Yes, yes. And especially because so if you ever spend time with babies and you just you just are still and you you make eye contact mm -hmm. with them and you all of a sudden I don't know for me I can feel my heart just mm. open and then it's like boom you know there's this this connection I just I just recently attended a birth where th this little guy the first time I met him he was you know he was in in utero of course and um someone had brought hawk feathers because <laughs> those are the blissing way is what i call it the blissing way and she mentioned hawk these hawk feathers and all of a sudden i just saw this this light open up in the room and it was just connected and it was it was that energy coming in i don't know that it was mm. it was a connection to him and then when i we got to the place where we were actually supporting the mom with some physical touch and sound um i saw a light between her heart and her him in in the belly i didn't oh. know what was until i saw what you described and at the time i completely discounted it <laughs> it was a blue light there was like a there was a couple different light but the blue was very present between her heart and his mm. and, and he told me right there he's like you He's like, I'm Hawk. Oh. Wow. I am a boy. <laughs> yeah. Like, Let me, I want to kind of reverse a little bit. Why were we talking about Ray? I couldn't remember what we were going into that conversation. We, 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 were, we got so caught up with Ray because we're so honoring of him because he's passed yeah. too. Yeah, exactly. But he was embodying that like infant childlike. What I yes, wanted to, yeah. Because of the embodiment of an of a very um I just have never experienced anything like mm. it. You mentioned something earlier in our conversation about embodying an, an energy. And he's such a good yes, yes. Somebody who embodies an energy. Like, I I still to this day, I've never experienced anything wow. like it. I know. I was like, oh, darn it. I knew my energy wasn't ready for him at the time. <laughs> and then it just shifted out to different spaces. But now you've got me like curious because I'm like, oh, like you're a midwife. You have this highly sensitive, energetic connection. Mm -hmm. And how beneficial I would say that would be <laughs> when things happen. Because I know I had my first uh, home birth transfer to a hospital which I feel like I've shared this story throughout the years. Maybe I did, but I'm going to share it on another platform in a larger way. It was highly traumatic. Mm. And, um, but the midwife was, I thought she was great, but in that space and time, she was misattuned mm -hmm. and, and it sent her fear and energy to a different direction, which I'm sure was a deeper karmic thing with me as well. Like subconscious, this whole birth fear, my whole foundation was literally coming to this precipice of some kind. Sure. And so you tell, yeah, so I want to hear, what have you even seen as, you know, like, like really anything cool? Like, oh my gosh, this happened. Or <laughs> are you allowed to share? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm the one that's so present with me is the one I just, you know, experienced. So, but that almost was. Oh, okay. I, I think I, I have one. <laughs> Hawk was cool and he's still cool. And I'm still working with him. This, this guy, mm. he's amazing. But there's this one story of a birth where um, the mom uh, was, she's a little like over the due date. And so we did a little energy work around that. And then she went into labor and, and, some of the problems, some of the issue, I guess, was that the the her and the father were together, but there was conflict. And um, I came into the birth scene and she was really irritated with him and just really wanted him out of the space. Mm. And I'm I'm all about just, you know, following the energy. 
And so it was such an interesting experience because uh, I felt like I had, it was my first experience, not that I hadn't experienced it before, but to this level mm. and, and what it taught me and what I, I actually feel like is a man's place in a birth. Mm. You know, of course, I'm speaking in terms of male and female here, um, <laughs> just because that's mostly what I've experienced. And so in this case, um, yeah, she wanted him out of the birth. And so I came in. I, what I'm trying to say is that I'm really respectful of the father's place in the mm. birth. As a midwife, I don't come in to take over and and control the energy of like and pushing anybody aside or making my place as the one who receives the baby or anything like that because to me that is mm -hmm. like a lifelong imprint you know of who whose hands are there first it's mm -hmm. physiologically it's uh you know you're laying down the bacteria in the intestines when you the first one who touches baby. I love what I want to hear about. Now I'm going to go off on another thing. Cause I'm like, I want to hear about that. So my, <laughs> my husband, um, the midwife, the midwives, <laughs> um, had my husband, he was like, well, every month video going, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. They're yeah. like, just put your hands here. And yeah. then he was like, what is all this stuff on my hands? Um, but I have to say my son wasn't washed either. Mm -hmm. And he's really super healthy. I've never seen a healthy, like he barely ever gets sick. And if he does, it's for a second and it's very easy. And so I love what you're saying. It's like that bacteria, that first contact. It's really important. All that mm -hmm. bacteria is super important because yeah, it's, it's, it sets them so up. then, yeah, sorry. So then what happened now? So you're in the space fathers. Yeah. Yeah. So he left actually left the house and I just really, um, how do I say this? I just went in deep. Mm. That's what it felt like. And, and I had this connection with her and we, I could feel sometimes hours and then sometimes minutes, what was, what was going to come. Mm. So like, you, you mean like in your body or like energetically or both? I could, um, and sometimes I could hear like mm. what she needed to hear. And sometimes I could, mm. I, was, I could always feel in my body. Yeah. I can always feel in my body. And um, so, yes, energetically. And I guess that's clear sentience. Yeah. In the body, when you feel in the body. So I could feel when her contractions would come. Wow. My body. And then I could feel if they were really strong or if they weren't going to be as strong. So I knew how to move with her to like um brace for that how strong it would be the incoming energy mm. and in a, in i guess in some ways what i was doing there was helping her hold it so that you know it's i don't know how to explain that exactly here's the energy conversation right sometimes I think, and this is why I think I, I was doing something that I think men are actually supposed to do oh, with wow. their partner. I feel like when, if, if a couple was really attuned, mm -hmm. uh, they could literally, the man could hold more of that birth wow. in terms of carrying, um, uh, some of the, you know, relieving actually. And I, I don't think actually birth was meant to be painful. Oh, I love this. Oh, you, you have me like, that's so profound to me. Cause the energy of that, because I know it was in the seventies, they, they let um, fathers in the room with women, which is fascinating, right? Like they weren't even allowed. They weren't even allowed. Wow. Well, men were arrested trying to come into the room with their. Yes. Their Dude. And so when, what you're saying, I can really feel into that. And it's so powerful, especially if you're in a partnership of male and female, the, where, what is the father's role and what is the energy of that? And I'm sure it has a lot to do with trauma for sure with the masculine and the feminine, but yeah, so, keep going, keep going. So much, right. This is deep because yeah. What, how much, how, how much did that displace us, you know, as partners when yeah, men weren't even allowed, like it, birth had been taken into this surgical room 
separation and and i'll just use the words that we are in a system a construct a system of separation and so many things are about going into separation and so a lot of the repair around this is is being able to come back together and really truly understand our roles with each other and so my experience in this birth was i truly felt that it i was experiencing it but it's for the mm. man and and this kind and men are always like well i don't really know what i'm supposed to do mm. and i'm always like love Aww. you're supposed to love yeah. like it's all you you know your yeah open heart you men would be the protectors of yeah. birth there's more to it than that so energetically they have a lot they can do and and they can they could feel they could energetically they could feel what what's going on i know if i i could do it they could do it mm. so they could you know i knew what to say to her like i said sometimes and you know, hours in advance that we're going to eventually unfold. And so at some point during all this, her husband came back and of course he was welcome in, right? He just came in and he said to us later when he was watching us, he said, I think you were speaking a different language. Mm. And we weren't. We really weren't. We it was just that we were so tuned in. It probably mm. seemed like what's the context? <laughs> what are you guys even talking about? But it was that's how mm. deep it was, our connection. And I have to say, you know, she was an energy sensitive. So we it was you know we I love that because when you were just sharing that in the beginning I ha I literally had this impression of this image come into my mind mm -hmm. of like a shaman mother with with a daughter like mm -hmm. helping her just be like just holding the space of energy speaking that language of energy obviously it sounded like because of course you know what I'm gonna say when people left brain it they don't hear anything they don't see anything yeah and so but it's really beautiful in partnership that he was even able to reflect that to yeah. have the conversation, like, I'm sure he wanted to be a part of it somehow, but maybe that was the, all the capacity he had for it. And how awesome, this is why I love midwives, to come in as that mothering, nurturing energy, because the way the world is and the way birth is, and we know that's a whole other conversation, it just feels so separate and not intimate and diseased and disabled. And so I just, I can really feel your story. And it's just, I feel like you've just sparked this, like this profoundness with the male and female. Yeah. Like what are the roles even yeah. in a home birth, a center birth? Cause I've seen different roles come up and yeah. what I needed from my partner, it felt like a lot, like yeah. energetically. I remember with my second birth, my first birth, I was like, nobody touched me. <laughs> it felt so activating. It just felt like too much. And then especially like my husband felt nervous. And then I want to take care of him. With the second one, I could feel a little, a tap on the shoulder, a little touch from him, but it also felt very sexual, which I thought was interesting. I'm like, wait a minute, yeah, like, where are we going with this? Yeah. So I'm like, do I want that? Do I not want that? It was very conflicting in my mind because I was like, how can I be sexual with all these midwives? Like, I don't, that's why I don't understand birth is so intimate and sexual, really. And then mm -hmm. we do it in like a hospital with sick people, with spotlights. Like, this is why women can't open. <laughs> <laughs> like, that you just go have sex in the middle of the operating table and just sure. see how that works like it just, exactly. we're primal it's like it doesn't work that way <laughs> no but the baby it's sort of like the baby got in in a certain way and that's exactly how birth classes I was like look you have this environment to make the baby you need that same environment yes I love that you teach that is that what you share yeah, that is so great. Yeah, I wish somebody well, I didn't take any education classes. But I, I like that 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 makes sense. It actually makes sense more like viscerally and like nature like, yes, yeah, like that's, you know, we don't see animals. Well, I guess if you go to the zoo, you could see them doing intimate things, mm -hmm. because people are spying on them. <laughs> but right, <laughs> you don't see them, the gazelles mm -hmm. or the lions doing it in front of people like, you know, here. There, you know, people are spying on them, I should say. Animals, you know, are very animalistic. Like, I always think of the kittens that find the closet to have their babies. 
That's right. I was thinking the same exact thing. My cat found me when she wanted to have her baby. She came and got me. Oh, of and course. She <laughs> She's like, hey, you ready? We're going to do that. Oh, yeah, okay. She, and you're just, did. what do you do? You're just kind of listening to the to the cat. <laughs> I totally did. And I oh I God. got a dark place for her. She did it through oh, the yeah. night, but she wanted me there the whole time. So what I did Aww. was I didn't even get to see it. I was right oh. there and yeah. did not actually witness it because I fully respected yeah that it was private and that's how birth works so I wow. lights were completely out and I just stayed with her hmm. and she birthed and I knew she would do every single thing she needed to do and all she wanted me to do was just be present and not touch anything wow. or do anything for her I, I've witnessed things online where people <laughs> The cat's in a box in the light and oh the, gosh people are picking them up and oh, I was like oh are they, are they licking them too they're not yeah, the mom yeah. do it <laughs> well like, I mean look Whoa. at humans we intervene in everything like a little way too much oh, and um yeah. but you know especially in birth and I and I love um it's just so beautiful the the energy that you bring and it can really again I know we're like empath to empath but just I appreciate all these things that you shared and I feel like there's more to share, but I want you to um, actually ways that people can find your work. Mm. Well, I do have a, um, a website, although, and I do have the, some of the birth stuff on there. I, I, I can, I, how I do it is I'm a sacred birthing mentor. Um, and that's kind of using the work of, of uh, St. Carl only because I, I agree with so much of it and it's, it's because I'm baby centric, mm. you know, I know. And, and I, women are extremely important, obviously, but from my perspective, if we just take care of the baby, we're going to be taking care of the mom too. Mm. You can't separate them. So. <laughs> and you, why. you're more local. Is this what your work is more local or more international? Oh, well, online. I can work, you know, I work all, with people all over the world. So yeah, give me your website for that. It's my name.com. So A N A S T A C I A T O W N S E N D dot com. And in the show notes, I'll have all this information, but I also like to verbally hear it. Yeah. But, you know, there's so many, yeah. I feel like the, the conversation can keep going and continuing and there's so much to say in the energetics. And I want you, anything you can leave people with, maybe somebody's like, you know, I'm ready to birth or I'm pregnant or I'm, I'm scared or whatever it is. What, what, what is the best advice that you can give? Hmm. Well, for me, I guess it's, it's understanding our connection to nature. It's not just the connection. It's that we are nature itself. And, and again, it's, when I mentioned the system of separation and going into separation, it's all about coming. It's knowing ourselves from our center, which is our heart and staying connected there because that love and staying connected to your baby with that love. And then, you know, going out from there is it's the safest place you can give birth from. I, all the births I've attended have been, easy <laughs> they've been amazing even when they're a little you know they go uh, a little bit but mostly just super good outcomes and that's because that's what we work with we what well, the way i see birth is it there's this energy a massive energy that flows through the body and wherever we're sort of we've gone into separation with and that just means outside of we we're holding something outside of unconditional love from mm. ourselves so in wholeness it's you know we know our center and we allow that to flow through us completely there's no place that it can kind of get caught up the energy can get caught up so the more you can just be that open open to that energy coming through the easier it's going to be and in fact, it can even go into bliss. Our divine birthright is bliss. Mm. We are meant to be in bliss. Perfect. Well, thank you, Anastasia, for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me here. It's always a pleasure with you. <laughs>
And thank you all for joining episode 187, Everything is Frequencies, Expanding into Your Own Divine Blueprint to Invite the Energy of Spirit Babies. Of course, you get the audio through the podcast, but now come and join, I think it's called At Spirit Baby Communication. <laughs> I should maybe check that out on YouTube. And so you get to watch us on video. Thank you for joining Spirit Baby Radio with your host, me, Kelly Meehan. Please join my community and stay in touch with monthly energy rants, Spirit Baby poetry, and get access to Spirit Baby 101 with tips and practices at my newsletter at newearthchildren.com. And join me on Instagram with lives at Spirit Baby Medium and join the Mighty Networks, the Spirit Baby Collective Membership and Motherhood to Mediumship. Remember, you are the heart that holds communication, and it is your time to connect. Come share in the great shift of your mind and the true spirit of your heart with Spirit Baby Communication.